So, so the main idea was to develop a method so we could sequence the genome of an individual at low cost and high speed. In order to do that, we had to redesign the way that DNA sequencing has been done. So um, just like if you wanted a bicycle that went a million times faster, it might have wheels, but it wouldn't look like a bicycle. So we did the same thing. We totally redesigned the process. Scientists estimate that us humans have around 20,000 to 25,000 genes inside our cells. These genes control or influence, more or less, all aspects of our life and health. But while it's relatively easy to draw links between certain damaged genes and the diseases these genes cause, in most cases, things aren't that straightforward. DNA sequencing is the process of determining the nucleic acid sequence, the order of nucleotides in DNA. It includes any method or technology that is used to determine the order of the four bases – adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Comparing healthy and mutated DNA sequences can diagnose different diseases, such as various cancers, and can be used to guide patient treatment. The Next Generation Sequencing NGS, involves fragmenting sample DNA into many small pieces that are immobilized on the surface of a chip and locally amplified. By detecting the color-coded nucleotides incorporated at each position on the chip with a fluorescence detector and repeating this cycle hundreds of times, it is possible to determine the DNA sequencing of each fragment. Having a quick way to sequence DNA allows for faster and more individualized medical care to be administered or even take action beforehand. So the hope would be that if you've been sequenced, we'll, we'll eventually know which diseases that predisposes you to get. And before you get the disease, you, you can be um, treated, your lifestyle can be modified. The main difference between the old method of DNA sequencing and the NGS method is the sheer scale and speed. The NGS method can currently sequence a human genome for under $1,000 in about a day, which is a remarkable million-fold improvement in speed and cost in just over a decade, and a 100 or 1,000-fold of the initial goal. A completely different approach to the possibilities of DNA sequencing is possible now, thanks to the innovation, and it has enabled the development of a broad range of related technologies, applications and innovations. Due to its efficiency, NGS is now being widely adopted in healthcare and diagnostics, such as studying coronavirus, but it's providing new opportunities also in biology, and there's even research about using DNA to store data. I would say, given the complexity of what needed to be achieved, we went from the ideas phase to having a working system that could be manufactured and put in the hands of other researchers. Uh, that entire process was, was less than 10 years. I think that's not a very long time scale in terms of science. Working with new innovations and new technology is hardly ever a quick, steady process or even a slow and steady process. When it comes to science, some luck and fortunate accidents might be needed to find the right path. It could be even said that the whole process requires finding the right new challenges that need to be failed and only then eventually solved. There were many, many failures along the way, of course. There, there always is in, in, in science and uh, if you're treading new ground and I have a saying to, to my research group uh, from time to time that the secret of success is, is to fail quickly. And uh, failures actually when you start to learn um, about uh, what, what the right pathway might be. Over the last decades, innovation has become a significant way to combat critical social risks and threats. New technologies open us doors to new possibilities and opportunities. By engaging more openly with each other, scientists and researchers stand not only a better understanding of their own work, but also develop new insights. I think the last year has shown us that um, scientists working together can solve major world problems in a very short space of time. So I think if we can continue to do that, I think we can start to tackle some of these very major problems such as climate change, as well as disease and health. And I, th I think and hopefully we won't lose that once we, we finally emerge from the pandemic that we'll continue to work in this highly collaborative way to solve the major problems for mankind. <laughs>